Gibbs is one of the most fleshed out and deeply realized characters in the NCIS world. But when you're talking about police procedurals, a deep backstory is rarely a good thing. Gibbs' life has been a blend of professional success and extreme personal tragedy. We're here to break it all down. Gibbs was born and raised in the small town of Stillwater, Pennsylvania. His father owned the local general store and was a pillar of the community. But Gibbs rebelled against the upstanding nature of his family. Though he would go on to be in the military police, young Gibbs was known around his hometown as a juvenile delinquent. He would frequently get into fights and other scrapes around town, resenting his father for regularly coming to the rescue. The animosity between the pair led to a 30-year split, one that only healed when Gibbs was forced to return to Stillwater on a case. Gibbs ultimately found a way out of his small town. His father's business partner and best friend, LJ, convinced him to join the Marines. Gibbs' mother took her own life via an intentional drug overdose when he was 14 years old. Though his mother made the choice with her family in mind, she took her own life so they wouldn't have to watch her die from terminal cancer. Gibbs and his father were already on less than ideal terms. Eventually, they realized that LJ had known of Gibbs' mother's plan to kill herself. The grieving men pushed him out and he fled town and disappeared. The decision to join the Marines stuck, however, and Gibbs enlisted shortly after graduating high school. He lost his first close friend in the service less than a year after enlisting in a helicopter crash near an American base in Okinawa. Things weren't all bad, though. Gibbs rose through the ranks as a military police officer and started a relationship with a woman back home named Shannon. He met her while waiting for the train out of town, and their relationship grew during his early years in the Marines. They were married after his sixth year in the service and had a child two years later. During his time in the Marines, Gibbs became an expert marksman. This came into play when he was deployed to Panama in the late 80s and the Persian Gulf during Operation Desert Storm. Gibbs is a man of few words, so his past comes out in dribbles. In flashbacks, longtime watchers can piece together his service record. He was wounded during his tour, during an engagement with Iraqi forces. Semper Fi. After awakening from a 19-day-long coma and returning home, he was awarded the Purple Heart. Though Gibbs has proven to be a talented soldier and leader, that rebellious kid was still inside. He declined to appear for any of his medal ceremonies. While Gibbs was deployed in the Persian Gulf, his wife and 8-year-old daughter were killed. Making matters worse, Gibbs' wife was killed for doing what can only be seen as the right thing. Shannon witnessed the death of one of Gibbs' fellow Marines, a killing carried out in person by cartel leader Pedro Hernandez. Though it carried some extreme dangers for her, Shannon agreed to testify. She was put into protective custody during the trial, but it proved to be too little. Shannon and her daughter were being transported to a safe house by an NCIS agent named Kurt Mitchell when their car was attacked. Mitchell was shot through the head and killed. The out-of-control car crashed, killing Gibbs' wife and daughter. While Gibbs' first wife passed on, a part of her lived on in a core piece of Gibbs' personality. The NCIS leader has an incredibly long list of unbreakable rules that he dispenses to his subordinates at appropriate times. There are said to be 69 of them. They include a bunch of tips for good investigative police work, rules for life, and tricks that his degenerate younger self would appreciate, like, quote, always be specific when you lie. The idea for these unshakable laws came from his late wife. She mentioned the fact that she was putting together a list of rules to live by when they first met. He took this idea and ran with it, thus memorizing his own code of conduct. Carrying on her list of rules to live by isn't the only way Gibbs has honored the memory of his late wife. He's shown throughout the series to be a man of action, and that goes double when the pieces involved in a plot are his friends and family. Gibbs was able to track down cartel leader Pedro Hernandez after he returned to the United States and shot Hernandez in the head. The incident was investigated by NCIS agent Laura Macy, who was able to put together that Gibbs was the man who pulled the trigger. However, she opted not to pass on this information once she realized his motivations for the killing. Macy was later killed over her connection to this incident, when she was stabbed to death by a disgraced army ranger working for the cartel. Her death was left as a message for Gibbs. It's far from the only time that Gibbs' dark past would pop up in unfortunate ways. Gibbs retired from the Marines in 1992 with the rank of Gunnery Sergeant and began looking for something to do with the rest of his life. Because of his fondness for the NCIS officer who investigated the deaths of his wife and daughter, he began training to become a member of the military investigative unit. Gibbs was a probationary agent, also referred to as a probie, under the very man who inspired his career choice. Agent Michael Franks personally oversaw his training and knew that Gibbs killed Hernandez, having stood aside to allow it to happen. Franks retired after a 1996 bombing in Saudi Arabia, believing that terrorist leader Osama bin Laden was behind it. 
The real-life attack was ultimately pinned on Hezbollah al-Hajjaz, though bin Laden's involvement remained a point of contention. Still, he saw the denial of his tips as playing politics and retired in exhaustion. Franks handed his badge to Gibbs on the way out the door, as he was his successor as commander of the unit. This is where we find Gibbs at the start of NCIS. I didn't quit. I retired. Gibbs' run of bad luck is evident outside of his career. His lifelong closeness to tragedy extends to his love life, with Gibbs frequently picking partners who are less than faithful. His first wife died in a tragic way, but he wasn't the type to swear off marriage forever. Gibbs has been married four times in his life, with each one ending in sad situations. His second wife divorced him, drained his bank account on the way out the door, and eventually remarried to one of Gibbs' close associates. She was later killed by an extremist. Gibbs' third marriage ended in a more ordinary way. He caught her in the midst of an affair, so she left him for the other man. He lost his fourth wife to his job, as Gibbs had become obsessed with bringing a serial killer to justice. The fact that Gibbs killed a man in cold blood before joining NCIS hangs over him throughout his career. Audiences learned about the slaying all the way back in the third season, and the situation occasionally brought it out of him when he was around people he truly trusted. But his team had no idea that the man they were following was a killer until a vigilante network targeted Gibbs for death. After being confronted by a judge, Gibbs revealed that he killed Hernandez. While the team is quick to move on from it, indicating that his secret is safe with them, it's clear that Gibbs is uncomfortable with so many people knowing what he's done. It flies in the face of his fourth rule for life. Best way to keep a secret? Keep it to yourself. Second best? Tell one other person, if you must. There is no third best. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.